Hey y'all, I'm back with another of Lady Report. I was thinking that I've really not talked much about my mother online because for one reason I know that she would be upset with me for the things I've done since she passed away. Because I was always taught to act like a lady. And a lady comes from what you are inside. And I've let some crazy sides come out since she passed away. Things I would have never done. I would have never done my comedy, Granny May, over in YouTube's Granny May's Place. I would have never done anything like that as long as my mama lived. No, my mother wore false teeth, and I was an adult before I ever seen her without her false teeth. That's just the way ladies did. Anybody seen them, they had their false teeth in. But you see, I did the Granny Mae videos where I didn't wear my false teeth. That would have appalled her. I mean, we're countryfied people, but none of us do that in real life. Believe me, we don't. So, Granny Mae was a character that I did. It just come out of my head. So, my mama would have been appalled, but my mama was the wind beneath my wings. She really was. I could not have done the things I did and and led such a happy life if it had not been for her. She was always there to back me. That's not to say when she saw me doing something wrong, because she was a Libra, and I should tell you if she thought you were doing something wrong. But if you were doing something good, she could build you up and try to push you to the top. That's just how she was. And I needed that all of my my life. From childhood on, I've always needed that. And when she passed away, I was trying to get something from somewhere else. Somewhere. Because that was gone. It was hard for me to deal with. That was harder for me to deal with than any divorce I will ever go through because I know that lady loved me. I know she did. And she and I were best friends. There was a time through there that I was a little older and she wasn't quite, you know, too old to go. We were two peas in a pod. We went, we went shopping, we did all kinds of things. And after my daddy passed away, she and I went to a, a country western club in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> she wanted to go. She had never seen anything like that, so I took my mama to a honky-tonk. And I got up and danced with the boys and the men who sent me drinks. Since I was driving, I wasn't drinking. I'd slip them to my mama. And she would take those cocktails. We just had the best time. I will never take anything for the good times we had. She could be who she wanted to be without having to worry about how my daddy was going to react to it because he was a teetotaler. He would have never done anything like that. When she was growing up in Mississippi, she loved to go to the dances. They had dances at people's houses and stuff about once a month. And they had to play live music with the fiddle and stuff. But they danced. So when she married my daddy, my daddy didn't do that sort of thing. No. No. So her dancing days was over. <laughs> and that was something she wanted to see again. And I sure took her. Yeah. 
And, you know, it, it got harder as she got older <clears throat> and became wheelchair bound and, and then eventually bed bound. And it, the relationship had to change because she was now someone that was having to be cared for by me instead of her caring for me, you know. So it's kind of had reversed. But she did make me my last birthday cake. She sure did, from her wheelchair. She sure did. So, I miss my mama. And I showed when she was here with me and she slapped me real good for making a fool of myself on the internet but letting everybody to see. <laughs> she wouldn't like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna catch hell when I get to the other side. And you know, for years and years, I, I would have dreams and my mama would be in it. And I would try to talk to her. And it's like she would either fade away or move away and never would answer me in none of my dreams. And I got it, was taking it offensive, like she's mad at me. And finally, about a year ago, she actually spoke to me in a dream. It was something regarding what was going on at that particular moment. And I thought, well, you know, she's she's come around now. <laughs> she's not as mad anymore. <laughs> I don't know why it took that long for me to actually be able to, to dream of her communicating with me. Because I think a lot of times that those dreams probably are a communication with the other side. That's just something I feel. Different from a regular dream. Yeah. All right, is that morbid enough for tonight? And it's starting to get to Halloween. I think next time I come in, I'm going to tell these three ghost stories that happened with, within my family. So this is my relatives that experienced this here in Mississippi. So I'll talk about that next time. Bye-bye, y'all.